Let's pray together as we begin our service this morning. Designer of the universe, maker of my soul, fashioned in your image, I humbly yield control. Conform me to your perfect will and mold me with your hand, shape me in your likeness, I bend to your demand. Mighty architect of land and sea, artist of the sky, build in me a servant's heart, paint me loving until I die. We ask that you would guide us and shape us and use us this morning. In your name we pray, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, if you'd like to join me in reading God's word, if you can, stand. I'm going to read from John chapter 2, um, 12 verses. Is that right? Okay, starting at verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with us? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you to do it, do it. Now there were six stone water pots set there for the Jewish custom of purification, containing 20 or 30 gallons each. And Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim, and he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it to him. And when the head waiter tasted the water, which had become wine, and did not know where it came from. But the servants who had drawn the water knew. The head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, every man serves the good wine first. And when the people have drunk freely, then he serves the poorer wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his discipleship, and his disciples believed in him. That ends our reading. That's the first miracle that John describes of Jesus. One of only six, I think, in the Gospel of John. But John doesn't describe it as a miracle. He describes it as a sign. Mm -hmm. And so the first step, the first sign, the first miracle, and the, the first thing that we get to see in our following Jesus is his mastery over creation mm -hmm. and we get to understand that he is God of creation let's sing and worship him this morning we'll start out with number 118 his name is wonderful
chord at number 128. And we'll sing the mighty power of God. Each verse. You may be seated as we'll turn over to number 681. We'll sing each verse of 681 together. Let's spend a few moments in prayer time together. 
And I'll ask you to guys to join with me in singing some more, some praise to our Lord. Lord, we're grateful for the opportunity that we have this morning to gather together, and we just take some time to say thank you, uh, whether it's uh, gathering here in this building or gathering from really anywhere in the world with internet access. Uh, we're just thankful for the opportunities that you've given us to come and hear from you today, and this opportunity that we have to share together in your word and in the life of your church. So we want to say thank you. Uh, we are drawn to think of those around us in our circle of friends or community or our church uh, who have needs. And so we take some time just to lift up to you those who are on our minds. Lord, we thank you in advance for the many answers to prayer you have in store, uh, for the healings, uh, for the strength, for the guidance, for the peace, whatever those needs are. We thank you for the way that you are at work in our lives. Thank you for being a loving Father who listens, and we thank you for being uh, a graceful, gracious and merciful God not quick to judge. Lord, as we worship you this morning, we ask that you would help us to see something in our lives that needs to realize the fact that you are Lord of creation and Lord of our lives. Help us to adjust to who you are and guide us into living for you this week, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you guys to sing with me as we sing about Jesus and his great name. Stars say, 
Thank you, Harris family, for that beautiful song. And now we have a birthday to recognize. Jim Case is 88 today. Will you join me in singing? Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Wonderful. <clears throat> you know, Jim is a very humble person, and he received several awards from General Motors for his inventions while he worked there as an engineer. And um, if you ever go to his home, uh, you will see all kinds of things that he built. He built this leaf collector that he drives and sweeps up the leaves off of his yard. And uh, he's just an amazing person and so humble. But whenever you need something done and done right, Jim is the man. Appreciate Appreciate Jim, and he has a wonderful family as well. Well, today we're going to look at the first miracle according to the Gospel of John, chapter 2, and we're also going to look at Psalm 95. And we're going to learn that Jesus is the Lord of creation. When, when I was uh, 13, um, I had just been transferred from my one-room schoolhouse to big city school, and there was 200 in my class. And nurses came to the school one day and lined up all of the students in the gymnasium. And I think they uh, did girls, and then they did guys. And anyway, two of us got pulled out of the class and sent to the principal's office. And I had no idea what was going on. So I thought maybe I was in trouble. I didn't know for sure. But the nurse showed up in the principal's office a few minutes later and, and told <clears throat> the principal that I had scoliosis. And so they called my parents and informed them what they had found out. And so scoliosis is curvature of the spine. And <clears throat> mine was severe enough that they thought it ought to be attended to. And believe me, I did not want to take my shirt off for anybody, especially a stranger, a, a female nurse. But um, so in order to have it verified and second opinion, I had to go through this process multiple times over the next couple of weeks. And in that town, there was a university, and so my mom took me to the university physician to get second opinion also, and the diagnosis was the same, severe scoliosis curvature of the spine in the lower lumbar area. So they talked about what could be done. And then <clears throat> when I was at church, my mom mentioned this to the pastor and said, well, we need to pray for Gene Allen. So after Bible study and a lot of the people had gone home, the pastor invited myself and a few others into a corner area and sat me in a chair and laid their hands on me and prayed for me. Now, I did not want to be there. I was shy, embarrassed, 13, very self-conscious, and having everybody's attention on me was uh, uncomfortable. But I will tell you, as much as I didn't want to be there, something miraculous happened that night as a pastor prayed for me. I felt a warm sensation and I felt tingling and I tried to resist movement, movement or any response whatsoever, but I could not. My body reacted to the power of Jesus Christ and bones grew tissue changed and I felt something incredible happening to me <clears throat> no matter how I tried to resist it. 
<clears throat> I could not. <clears throat> and that night I was healed. I got up and I left the room and I ran around the block. Our ch church was located in town and I ran around the block. It was nighttime, it was winter time. <clears throat> and I felt such joy and just energy and uh, was very happy that God had touched me in this miraculous way. In the years that followed, I noticed a, a great improvement in my ability to run, and my ability to work, and to do things that my other brothers could do already. And I give God the praise and the glory because he's the one who touched me. He is the great physician and the healer. This was the first time I had experienced the supernatural power of God in such a way. I guess at that time I just knew that God was God and, and he loved us. He sent his son to die for us. But to come down and interact with me in such a personal way, it was the first time I'd realized the intimacy of God's relationship and how he loved his children. Um, through the years, I've not shared this very often, but on occasion when I have felt that God wanted me to give testimony to his power and his lordship over creation. Sometimes people will tell me, well, God doesn't do that anymore. You can leave those verses out when you're studying the Bible, Gene. God doesn't work in that way in these days. And I just smile and say, okay. Um, we still pray for healing, and I think God is pleased that we trust him and give him the first chance to touch us when we have any need whatsoever. In the Gospel of John, we have Jesus presented as the I Am. He is the same God of the day when Moses was at the burning bush and Moses asked the question, well, if people ask by what authority I do these wonders and make these claims, God, who should I tell them sent me? And there in the Old Testament, we have the recorded passage where God responds to Moses from the burning bush and he says, tell them I am. Jesus uses the same verbiage in the Gospel of John. More than 30 times he says, I am. God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. In this second chapter of John, three days after coming to the city of Cana, Jesus and the disciples are invited to a wedding along with Jesus' mother. I'm told that Jewish weddings can last seven or eight days, customarily. And during that time, after several days, the wine ran out. Jesus told the servants, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them to the brim. That means 120 to 180 gallons of fresh water in these stone pots. And then he said to them, take some of that water now out of the pots and take it to the head waiter. So they did. They took some of that water to the head waiter. And when the head waiter, head waiter tasted the water which had come from the water pots and had become wine and did not know where it came from, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, every man serves the good wine first 
but you have kept the good wine until now. And then John says this, this is the beginning of his signs that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Here are the two reasons that Jesus performs miracles, to manifest his glory and to cause us to believe in him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray as we read it and study it that we might understand it and that we might bring you the glory that you are due and that we might trust in you and believe in your name as you will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First of all, Jesus' miracles manifest the glory that God gives him. We encounter the supernatural. It causes us to wonder how in the world could that ever happen? We come face to face with the power of divinity. There is no way that could be humanly possible, so it must be a God thing. Miracles should move us to a state of awe and fascination. Since it is divine and not natural, it obviously displays a glory that is attributed to God or the heavenly realms. A miracle such as turning water into wine, healing the sick, or raising the dead back to life shows us the glory of God. He is above us. He is more powerful than us. He is better than we are. He is able to do what we would not be able to do alone. He is full of glory. He is glorious. And secondly, the signs that Jesus did cause others to believe in him, or more specifically, to believe that he is God. There is more than just simply changing water into something else. Jesus not only introduces the element of carbon into the ordinary mixture of what was hydrogen and oxygen atoms, he creates a complex product that is instantly and supernaturally aged. Because remember, wine takes time. And according to the head waiter, the chemical byproduct of this sugary compound, C12, H22O11, tastes better than any wine he has ever sampled. <clears throat> Just in case you didn't get that, it's impossible to create wine out of water. Simply impossible. Having done what was humanly impossible, Jesus not only manifests his glory, he makes known his divinity. He is God. <clears throat> Psalm 95, 1 through 7. proclaims, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods, in whose hand are the depths of the earth, the peaks of the mountains are his also, the sea is his, for it was he who made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. He made the earth, he made the sea, and he made us. When buying a fine violin, one needs to look inside the body of the violin to find the tag or the label that identifies the maker. When looking at the outside, all violins look the same to me. But there is a difference in the craftsmanship of various violins. 
A Stradivarius violin is very expensive. <clears throat> Antonio Stradivarius, the Stradivari, made these violins that are now known as Stradivarius. He lived in the late 1700s. Uh, excuse me, the, the late 1600s. He passed away in the early 1700s and made most of his violins in the late 1600s and the early 1700s. Some people try to fake or forge uh, Stradivarius and put a tag on the inside that says Antonio Stradivari, trying to pawn off a cheap copy of the very, very fine work. In May of 2006, Antonio Stradivari's 1707 violin was sold for $3.5 million. His craftsmanship is sought after. He is well known for the best music quality in an instrument. In April 2007, <clears throat> another of his instruments sold at Christie's for $2.7 million to an anonymous bidder. In 2010, the record expensive, most expensive musical instrument <clears throat> was a concert violin built in 1697 by Antonio Stradivari, and it sold for a record $3.6 million. This violin was thought to have been previously owned by Napoleon. When considering the finest of instruments, you need to look at who made it. And obviously, Stradivari has earned a reputation of the very finest quality. <clears throat> These recent record prices for his instruments prove that his instruments are the best. <clears throat> When considering the finest of wines, Jesus the Creator had the upper hand. He instantly forms a sophisticated compound that usually takes years to mature. Oh, and by the way, he didn't even touch the clay jars. He simply speaks, and this miracle takes place without so much as Jesus moving his little finger. When I was a kid, there was a comic book called Superman. He could fly stop a speeding locomotive, and leap tall buildings with a single bound. Of course, Superman was only a fictional character. He was only the figment of someone's imagination. Jesus is the real thing. Like Stradivari, he walked the earth. He left his mark. And your calendar gives us indication that he was brought to this earth 2,022 years ago. Calendars before that time would be denoted B.C., before Christ. And our calendar is A.D., which in Latin means the year of our Lord. For all practical purposes, Jesus divided history in two. He is the real thing. It was simple for him to perform this miracle, being the creator of heaven and earth. What's to be learned from this miracle is that Jesus is the master over all created things. He is Lord of creation. Satan actually knew this, for he, in his first temptation to Jesus, asked him to turn stone into bread. Jesus aptly reminded Satan that man not only must eat, but must also obey God. So there's a time to perform miracles, and there's a time not to. Jesus was here to do his Father's bidding, not Satan's. 
It was not yet his time to show that he was Lord over all creation when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. The Gospel of John uses the phrase, I am, more than any other writer in the New Testament. Half of the 48 New Testament appearances of this phrase are found in John's Gospel. And almost every time it's Jesus who speaks these words. It seems then that this phrase is distinctive and important among the Gospel's presentation of the identity of who Jesus is. He is the I am. Now, there are seven occurrences of Jesus saying I am that are in the predicate. That is, after the noun, there is a description of the noun. For example, I am the bread of life. And then there are nine appearances of Jesus saying I am without a predicate. In other words, the I am just stands alone. These are absolutes. For instance, when the Pharisees question his authority and say that Abraham is their father and who's yours, Jesus says, I am. In John 8, 24. Now, the word I am in the Greek is ego a me. And sometimes in our English versions of the Bible, these absolutes of the verb I am is translated I am he or it is I, but in the Greek it is the same every time, ego, a me, ego, a me, the same as the answer given to Moses from the burning bush, I am. Now apparently Jesus' audience in John 8 heard this similarity of Exodus 3 when Jesus said that before Abraham was, I am. And they picked up stones and said, blasphemy, let's kill him. Because he was comparing himself to God. In John 4, 26, Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, and she said, our ancestors worshipped And they told us of a Messiah who was coming. And Jesus said, Ego, a me. I am. Or it is he who you are speaking with. I am the Messiah. In John 6, 20, Jesus came to the disciples walking on the water. And they were afraid and said, It's the ghost. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Ego, a me. I am. And the last three unpredicated references of I am are in John chapter 18, when Jesus is being arrested in the garden. And the Roman cohort and the chief priests come to bind him. And Jesus says, whom do you seek? And they answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And three times Jesus says, I am. I just want to share with you the significance of this first miracle where Jesus shows that he is Lord over creation. Later, we are going to study throughout the Gospel of John that he is Lord over time. He is Lord over space. In other words, time and space do not limit him. When he is... In Galilee, he knows what's going on in Cana. And when he says, your child is healed, though he is miles away, 
It does not prohibit him from exhibiting his power. Jesus will tell us that I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. He will tell us I am the way. In old times, you had to go through a gate to get into a city, so he said, I am the gate. When the disciples were questioning Jesus about the difficulty of a rich man going to heaven, Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. I am. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus says, I am the truth. And I am the true vine. All of these references to the great I am tell us that Jesus is above us. He came to save us. He wants you to believe in him. Jesus loves you. He is God's one true son. He represents God in the flesh for us. Everything he did, we should emulate. Love. Jesus loves you. <clears throat> when, when you think about it, all of life is a miracle. I mean, even, even the fact that we have been protected from unknown hazards over the course of our lives. Probably the very fact that you are here today is nothing less than a miracle. <clears throat> I just wanted to share with you um, what Lena Treas wrote about miracles in this poem. She says, the age of miracles is past, I hear the skeptic say. How little does he understand Christ's miracles today? His great and marvelous works go on. How do I know, my friend? He wrought his miracles in me. His wonders never end. Did Jesus make the blind to see? My sight he has restored. He caused the dumb to speak, you say? My lips now praise the Lord. He also made the deaf to hear? But my ears were sealed. I could not hear his gentle voice till by his love he healed. He passed through crowds and was not seen. Each day he walks with me through busy streets and thoroughfares, and none can see but me. He healed all manner of disease. With them I had my part. He cured my sin-sick heart. You see, he healed my broken heart. Did Peter walk upon the sea? When I'm cast down with care, he takes my hand and lifts me on air. No miracles today, you say? How wrong you are, my friend, for what the Lord has done in me transcends all human understanding. Yes, these are miracles to me, all blessings from above. But oh, the greatest one of all is the wonder of his love. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they tell of a chronology of Jesus' life and his ministry. But John tells us of his divinity. He tells us of his identity as God's son. He tells us that he is God come in the flesh. That he is the manifestation of God's love for you. I pray that you will believe in Jesus and that you too will come 
to understand the glory of the one and only Son of God. Would you pray with me? Our gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today and how this follower of Jesus aptly shows us the correlation between the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New. The God of creation and the God of salvation. The God who is the maker and the giver of life and the one who is the redeemer and redeems my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May we glorify you today in the miracle of life that you have bestowed upon us. And may we, with faith, believe in you and trust your sovereignty with all of our days. We pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. take a few moments to highlight some things for you guys. Uh, if you've looked into your bulletin, you'll see quite a few inserts in there. Uh, one of those is for the church ministries conference that's coming up in the early part of March. Uh, but one reason to mention it to you all is because it's not just for our teachers. It's something that we sponsor for our teachers, but it's open to anyone in the congregation and there's an early bird registration deadline that's coming up a little sooner, and so you want to check that out if you think you might be interested. Really, if you're in the church and if you're involved in ministry, however generically you want to apply that, there's probably something at the conference that can benefit you in, in your ministry. So it's open to anybody who would like to attend. Check out the instructions in there. Uh, one other thing I noticed is uh, Right to Life of Ingham County has uh, organized an opportunity for any of us, all of those who um, value the sanctity of human life, uh, to take a stand. And that opportunity is coming up this Wednesday. So check out the details for that in there. One other announcement I need to make is for our annual meeting. Uh, which is a, a business meeting that's our most important meeting of the year where we decide um, uh, some new deacons to serve and how we're going to use our finances for the year and, and really how we're going to direct the ministry of our church for the upcoming year. So it's the most important meeting of the year and that comes up a week from Wednesday, January 26th. So I want to make sure and mention that so you know to be ready to come and have a voice in our church. Deacons, your reports are due today to get ready for that, if you didn't already know that. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. And Psalm 95 is written with a lot of plural pronouns, so I think we should read it together if you would join me. O oh, come, let us sing to joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is great and great king above all gods, in whose hands are the depths of the earth. The peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for it was he who made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. I'll invite the worship team forward, and we're going to sing that same scripture that we just read. It's 
in your hymnals at number 227, if you'd like to turn there. But let's sing through this chorus as we depart and prepare for a week of worship. 227, come let us worship and bow down. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And go in peace. Amen.